Hi, and welcome to the Bookish Stitcher podcast. My name is Jeanette. You can find me on Ravelry, Instagram, and Goodreads as Bookish Stitcher, all one word. I hope you've had a nice, relaxing, and stress-free week since I last podcasted. We have had so many things going on here. It's the end of the school year for my son, and he's very happy that it's summer, but he's a little bit sad that he won't get to see his friends every day. And also his beloved teacher, who he loves so much, is not going to be teaching at school anymore because they don't pay teachers enough. Teachers should make more money, I think, because she just wasn't able to, you know, pay all her bills and stuff that she had to and the salary that they were giving her. So she's not going to be there anymore. He was a little bit sad. And then my daughter, I mentioned last week that she was going to go see the eye doctor to go and figure out, you know, not the allergist. She has an appointment for that later, but the eye doctor. And uh, we did. We spent three hours there, and I forgot to bring my knitting. Ugh. I thought that I would be kind of preoccupied with keeping track of her and that I wouldn't have time for it and that it would be a long time but we got in I knew there were so many people and there were tons of toys it was perfect waiting room for a kid's eye doctor but I totally could have brought my knitting and uh, so we were there for about three hours and they determined that she is farsighted so we went just yesterday and got her some glasses she really wanted pink ones but when we got there they did not have any pink ones and it was a little bit of a disaster right at first because you know how kids can be when they're like, I want this color. But we convinced her, I convinced her on some purple sparkly ones. <clears throat> and it just happened to be, I have some tea really fast. This is some uh, Tim Hortons uh, blueberry tea that my friend Shelly Kiki Lucy gave to me. Oh, it's still really hot. But it just happened to be my lucky day. I was so thankful for this because... All the kids I wear, it was 50% off, which was so amazingly wonderful because she might not have walked out of there with glasses. She would have been like, I'm sorry if uh, it hadn't been 15 50% off because for over $400 for a pair of kids' glasses is crazy, I, I feel like. I don't wear glasses, so I don't know what my husband does, but he hasn't had to have his prescription changed in forever. Maybe he should go look into that, but not for a while because we just bought my daughter glasses. But thankfully it was 50% off. So 50% of that was still a lot, but it was much more doable. <laughs> and so she got those yesterday and she looks adorable in them. I can't even, I feel like she needs a little lab coat and to be writing notes. So she's just so, she's so cute. It's, they look great on her. And then uh, as you might be wondering by the title of this episode, it's kind of a weird title, but I have a funny little story to tell you this week because it has been raining so much here right now. It's not normal. And because what happens when it rains so much is the the critters from outside don't want to be out in the rain. So we have been finding scorpions in our garage. And I think that I have probably convinced my neighbor that I am a big weirdo because I were getting her out into the car one, my daughter out into the car one day to go get my son, and I saw a giant scorpion on the garage wall, and so I shut the door and got her in quickly, and I picked up a board because my husband has some spare um, pieces of lumber in our garage for building things, and um, I picked one up, and I started bashing the scorpion on the garage wall trying to kill it, and it's like falling around and I'm hitting around in the garage and I finally because I didn't want it coming into the house because normally I'd be like oh release into the wild but not with little kids and stuff and uh, I didn't want them going out to the garage with bare feet to get something and getting stung by a scorpion and having another hospital trip because that would just be how May would end but anyways so I was in the garage hitting this scorpion with this block of lumber and I, I got it I, I managed to get the scorpion away, but then I like put the lumber and I looked across the street and my neighbor was sitting there just staring at me and watching me because he probably thought I was crazy. I was like, scorpion, okay, gotta go. I got in the car. It was it was so funny, but I was a little bit embarrassed. But yeah, the, the scorpion had to die. So this is the title, Dear Scorpion, Please Die. <laughs> so let's get into the knitting, shall we? Because I have a lot of that. 
like I said, I've been trying to get, I've decided stuff needs to come off the needles. I just, with the stress cast ons, it was, it's now too much stuff on the needles. So I worked on getting stuff off and I have three things off the needles. So I have, I'm going to show you the ones not on the sock blockers first and then show you the ones on the sock blockers. But this is some Texas dyed wool and this color is the Bad Ballerina. It's this lovely pale pink with flecks of black and purple. And then I did some Knit Picks brights for the heel and toe. And then the other, and that sock's from Good For Me. And then the other one that I finished was the one that I had hanging out in the car for while I was going to stuff like carpool lines and things like that. And so these are some Fiber Nymph Dye Works in the Gnome Place Like Home. And these are a Christmas present for my friend Becca, who I got to see this week. It was lovely. I hadn't gotten to see her in a while, and I, it was so funny because I couldn't knit on these socks in front of her, so I brought these to the park so that she wouldn't see me knitting on her socks as we walked around with a whole bunch of our other friends. We all got together at the park and hung out. So there are sparkly. I don't know if you can kind of see that. But here are what the two on the sock blocker look like. <laughs> look a little nicer on the sock blocker, right? Okay, there we go. But yeah, so they are done. And on to more pairs of socks because I still have all the ones that I cast on, so yay. And I have, I think, three more pairs that I cast on for the Great Sock Needle Experiment, which I started at the end of April, just trying out different sock needles. And I still have a whole bunch more to try out some other, I've tried out all the DPNs I think that I've gotten. Um, I still have some 9-inch circs, some 8-inch circs, some 2 circs, uh, all kinds of other things to try out. I probably won't try Magic Loop. I know a lot of people love it, but it is, I've tried it before and I, I get ladders and I just don't enjoy the long cable hanging off the end. So those are my two socks that are off the needles. And then the last thing, huge, and I am so glad this is done. It is my Catch Harbor shawl from the Take Heart. This is over eight feet for its wingspan. And I, did, I didn't block it, I did soak it and then lay it flat to dry, which I almost wish I hadn't even done because I don't block things. If I love how squishy something is, I never block it because a lot of times the squishiness will block out of what you get but this you know it was so squishy and I I've heard my friend uh Tanya sample girl busy mama talk about this too how she's had that happen and this is a 50 this yarn is a Islington DK from Kettle Yarn Co and it's a 50 50 BFL and silk so that would be expected with the silk that it would start to do that but it is enormous like it, it's it's so big and I am not tall I'm a very short person and all the ends are sewn in and I will show you probably how I will wear this if I can so I would probably with this just tuck the ends around and it's still huge when I do this like I it's still so giant. Um, I don't know. I might try to make it a little bit smaller by, see those nice panels, by um, putting it, maybe rewashing it and putting it in the dryer because I don't know how silk would react. I've never tried putting silk in the dryer for a couple of minutes, but yeah, it's, it's huge. And so nice and pretty, but I don't, there, I, there's nothing I could have done pattern wise to make it smaller, I guess. I could have cast on less, but yeah, so it's done and it's enormous and it's, it's nice. I will definitely be wearing it this way instead of around like a normal shawl because that would just be huge. And I have blue and pink, so it's, like I said, I love that color combination right now. And yeah, I'll just wear that for the rest of the podcast because it's too hard to get off. <laughs> but 
It's done. And this actually has something that's really cool. It has, uh, I'm choosing to view it as really cool. It has a spirit line in it. So I believe that's the term because I was just listening to uh, a history thing and it was talking about spirit lines and the Navajo and how when they would do weaving, they would always put a spirit line in it to prove that it was something that had been made by hand. So a, a defect basically. And I had, as I talked about, a spirit line in this way down there and uh, I decided that I didn't like it and I wanted to fix it, and so I fixed it. But then yesterday, and that was weeks and weeks ago, and then yesterday, not yesterday, Friday, when I was getting ready to bind off, I laid it out and I looked and I noticed another line where you have to, it's not hard, you just have to be very conscientious of where you are in the pattern, and if you think you're a certain place, you might not be there. But so I looked and like three or four rows down, I had another spirit line and I was just like, you know, I'm, I'm not going to go back. I'm ready to bind off. I'm, I'm done. And so I just decided to do that. But then when I was listening to this history podcast today and I was talking about spirit lines, I was just like, I have a spirit line. And I now feel much better about my, my defect in my shawl that there's one line. You really can't tell, especially because it's enormous and it's bunched up around my neck. There's no way anybody would be able to tell. And it took so long, but I'm so glad it is done. And the next thing that I am going to get off the needles so I can turn it in for the knit along is in my Diana Couture bag, which I absolutely love. And I use her bags a ton for two color shawls, but they do they work great for two skein shawls too. So that's how why this is in here, even though it's not a two color shawl, it's a two skein shawl. And another amazing thing with this shawl is my canopy shawl out of Neighborhood Fiber Co. But it has an applied border. And Diana's bags have pockets in them. So here is her little tag, Diana Couture. And I have in it some of my things for my Bling Your String Club, a little scissors. But she has another side of pockets that have them measured out so you can put smaller things in them. And I have my Marbles DPNs in them so that I can use them for the applied border. So whenever I'm doing an apply, applied edging, I pull one out and do that. And when I can be done, I can put it back in there. So I really appreciate those little pockets that hold things so nicely. And as I said, I am on the very last little part of it and I'm about halfway done with that. So this is my canopy shawl. A much brighter yellow than you're seeing but it's a beautiful yellow very cheerful and the shawl is huge and it it is another i believe it's bfl cashmere silk but i don't feel anything but the bfl right now i'm hoping that because this like this is feels softer than this even though well i guess this is 50 percent silk but i'm hoping this will soften up in the wash and this is what the oops this is what the applied edging looks like. Little, they remind me of like sunbeams or sunflower petals shooting off of this gorgeous yellow. And like I said, I am about halfway done with that. And I'm going to just work on this almost exclusively, basically exclusively at the house. I won't take this out anywhere, but until I get it done. And so hopefully since it is a long extended weekend, that will be done by tomorrow and I can block it and turn it in for the knit along that the designer is having in her group. And I wanted to also say a big happy Memorial Day to anyone here in the States and a giant huge thank you to anyone who's watching who is a military family or is currently or has been in the military. Thank you so much for all that you've done. And that's just an amazing sacrifice. So thank you. And the last work in progress is a new one. I just had to put something in my new bag from the Bling Your String Bag Club. Oh, I love it. The, I think that's my favorite one. It looks very, as they would say, it kind of reminds me of Japanese kind of art. It looks very kawaii, kawaii desk. It looks very cute. And then a little things. 
in here is a hats for granny hat um, it's a charity that does hats for the homeless and they are collecting some for something that I'm going to in the fall and this is they only wanted acrylic or um, you know not even super wash it had to be so this is Cascade Yarns Chair of DK, which is 55% nylon, 55% acrylic. So I figured that would be okay. And this is the color that I'm using. It's kind of kind of accurate. But. So this yarn says it's a DK, but um, it's super thin. Uh, it's definitely sport, maybe being being generous. I've seen some fingering weight yarn that is as plump as this like a heavy fingering and um, so I'm doing the sock head hat just a variation on it just cast on less stitches since I'm using a one size up needle but that's what the hat is looking like it's kind of doing this kind of stained glass effect with little colors and there I have my I love it hot or not, not hot air balloons necessarily but just balloon little stitch marker that Erin made I love balloons. When I was a little kid, I used to have this secret desire to get a belt and tie a whole bunch of balloons to it and see if I could float around my neighborhood. I might still have that desire. But it would take a lot more balloons now than it was when I was a little kid and tiny. So that is the thing, and I'm going to be working on that a little bit. I think it can get done easily. I want to get one done every month. For the next four months, May, and then the things. And one of my friends was saying on Instagram at TW Crochet 83, I think, that she's done 17 hats for that already, which is amazing. She's she's awesome. And those are all my works in progress. Now for spinning, I'm not quite done, but I just wanted to bring this down and show you. I did not do as much spinning this as much as I thought I would this week. Early bedtimes one out and reading one out a whole bunch. So the singles are almost done. I thought I'd have it plied today, but you know, best of intentions. But I had to show you this fiber because this it's looking so beautiful. This is what I how it looks like. So there it is. And it <laughs> this popped off. The acre works bob and popped off. As so I try to get it back on, that may make some problems when I'm plying, but it's beautiful natural color. And I do not normally spin such natural colors, but I absolutely am just finding this to be so stunning. And I can definitely see now why people love spinning with natural fibers. Undyed. I don't know. It may be dyed, but it it might not be. I'm not sure. It didn't say. This was a mystery fiber that my mother-in-law got for nine, seven, eight, nine dollars. I don't remember how much it said. Uh, and so I have no idea what it is. But yeah, that's all the spinning. And then on to group news. We have a giveaway in the group right now for the Schmancy, Schmancy shawl by Fairy Little Designs. Thank you so much, Fairy Little. And that will be drawn for next week. We have a couple days left in our Read Knit Cow, and you can enter anything in this. You can just make it relate to a book. And we have three prizes for it, so there's actually a really good chance that you will win something. And there's just a chatter thread, so whatever you want to put in there. But these are their three bags made by my friend Amanda, and her Etsy store is Stitched Together 4G. And this is lovely book print with this metallic spine detail. And then Brenda, a good yarn, I gushed over this forever ago, gave three skeins of hand spun. And I thought about keeping them, and I'm going to give them all for you guys because I don't want to, you know, I, I want them to go to you guys. So you have the choice, of, you have a chance of winning one of these three beauties. Brenda is just amazing with everything she does, so I know that you will love knitting with those. And then 
That's the read knit cal. And after the read knit cal is over, we still, it's, it's been going on for a while, but I'm going to put up an FO thread for the great sock needle experiment. So you can put your FOs in there. And my friend Mandy Pinecone has offered to do a bag prize for that. So thank you so much, Mandy. And Mandy said that she would ship it to the winner so that I won't have to worry about shipping, which is so kind, Mandy. Thank you so much. And um, let's see. Oh, we had our first, we have our, I have a Patreon account for the uh, podcast and we had our first Patreon subscriber, donator person. And that was so lovely to get on there and see that one person had done that. And it, the perfect amount, a dollar is perfect. I mean, I, I don't want anybody giving big amounts. It's like, to me, it's like, you know, the dollars, like you're treating me to a cup of coffee or a tea once a month and we're sitting and knitting together as you watch the podcast. So thank you so much. And that's so wonderful. And, uh, since, you know, it's just, that's one fifteenth of the way there. So if 14 more people do that, then the cost for hosting to Libsyn and all that stuff and shipping for prizes <laughs> will be covered. So that would be just so great. And since I know that it takes a while for Patreon or for sometimes for the Patreon to build up because sometimes people might want to go to the link and might forget or right now might not be a good time. I wanted to mention that I'm going to be de-stashing some of my project bags in the Ravelry group and uh, all the sales that I make from those. I'm going to de-stash four bags. Uh, the sales for those will go to help pay for Libsyn this month for the podcast. And so if you would like to look at some project bags and help the podcast out at the same time, that would be lovely. So I think that my, oh, and on the Patreon, I also wanted to say, if you went on there and were discouraged by the fact that I, that you were told that you would see a video of me dancing if you donated, that was my husband being silly. You really won't have to endure a video of me dancing. So I just thought that I was like, honey, what are you doing? You're putting in random things. He was like, you will get this and this. And this I was like, oh my goodness, I can't let him touch my my internet stuff. It's so funny. And so I think that is all for. Oh no, wait, there's one more thing for group news. So. I wanted to thank everybody for commenting on the uh, thing of, for the charity knit along. I've got some good ideas going in my head. I think a double knit scarf in the team of the Spurs, which is a big team here in San Antonio, colors might be cool. I don't have yarn for it, so I'll have to see because I'm not buying yarn right now. But, um, or some kind of simple shawl or cowl. I think that's a great idea. And then so many people said that they would love to receive a hand knit uh, gift or something like that. And so I didn't frog anything. My friend Darlene, who is Bags by Awesome Granny, like wrote on the message boards and texted me. She's like, don't frog your things. And so it was so funny. Hi, Darlene. And um, I didn't frog anything. And uh, I now added a ton of more people to my list. I have about 30 people that I want to knit for. Now, since so many people were very positive about that, and since I thought that we have a thousand members in our Ravelry group, which is crazy, because I remember when we had 500 and Steph Knitting Samurai commented and said, congrats, and here's to another 500, I was like, I will never have a thousand people in my Ravelry group. It was just something like I knew. I will never have, I mean, this is not just a podcast about knitting and spinning, it also has the Venn diagram of books, and I never imagined that so many people would be readers as well. And uh, that's so great to know that there's so many knitters that fall into the reading side too, and I, I love that. And so I thought that for the thousand member giveaway, I would make you something, and it could be like, uh, if you want some hand spun, I could spin you up something, or if you'd like socks or a cowl, no even stars. I'm just going to put that out there. <laughs> Nothing hugely, hugely complicated. But yeah, so I'm going to put that up there. And there will be a prompt. I had it in my mind earlier, but I have now forgotten it. So just go and look on there and see what the prompt is. And write. it will probably be like, what would you do with this? Or where would you like to do go? Or so, I don't know, something like that. But yeah, I think that's all for the group news this week. And then the last thing is the book. So I have two books down here with me, and I debated which one to review, because I enjoy both of them. 
and I feel like one is probably more popular than the other and the other is less well known. But I went on Goodreads and was looking at reviews and I feel like the one that is more well known, and this tends to be the case, was liked better. So I think I'll review that one, even though the other one I think would be a newer find for a lot of you guys. But I can still review that one some other day, which is lovely about having an on, the podcast ongoing. So the book that I'm going to review today is a classic because I realized that I haven't reviewed a classic in a while and I'm actually doing a classic summer reading challenge. So this is by Elizabeth Gaskell and it's North and South. And it was actually made into a pretty good mini series, but I read the book before that. And if you've seen the mini series and enjoyed it, I highly recommend you go and read the book. And so this deals with Margaret Hale, who her father is a pastor, and he leaves the church and goes over to the the church that they were in was in a very nice and pretty part of England, and they leave that, or in, in Hampshire, sorry, and uh, they go and they move to this mill town that is very dirty and very unlike anything that Margaret has been around, and just seeing the people at the mill and the poverty that surrounds it, she kind of becomes just to have very strong feelings of social justice towards these people and wanting life to be better for them. But she's torn because <laughs> she falls in love with John Thornton, and he is kind of a self-made man. He runs the mill, and he, he does have redeeming qualities, but then he has also not good ones. But she kind of develops this relationship with him and kind of a push and pull of trying to get him to change some of his opinions about things. And it's a very good book. It does have a love story, but it also has that very interesting social aspect, which I highly enjoy reading about. And she, Elizabeth Gaskell, is just, she's a brilliant writer. And I think that you guys might like this one if you haven't read it or if you've just seen the show you might go back and try to read the book because it's really good so this is North and South by Elizabeth Gaskell and that's everything I have this week I wanted to give it be a little bit shorter one since the other ones have been longer and also because my download time on Libsyn where I host to iTunes does not have much time left does not have much space left on it so yeah so this will be perfect and I hope everybody has a rest a good week coming up and that you get to do all the things you love okay bye guys if I can find the stop button <laughs>